Welcome to the Dynon Channel, your video source for information, education, and training on Dynon Avionics' industry-leading line of integrated avionics for experimental amateur-built and light sport aircraft. Today's video, Skyview HDX, Screen Layout Management. Hello, in today's video on Skyview HDX, I'd like to demonstrate how to manage your screen layout. In the uh, user interface changes we made in HDX compared to the original Skyview system, the, the screen layout management is dramatically different and even the view you see on screen right now is much different than you might be uh, familiar with in the Skyview. The most striking difference is the engine presentation along the bottom of the screen. This is actually a feature that we have acquired from our sister company, Advanced Flight Systems. Their uh, systems were long known for the distinctive bottom engine band. And in designing HDX, we adopted that as one of a Advanced Flight Systems' great ideas. Uh, the bottom engine presentation has proven very popular in their system, and now it's an element in Skyview HDX. So on the screen now, you're seeing this bottom engine band. Another new feature in HDX is the presentation of map info items in this vertical column on the right. In the original Skyview, those various data boxes were selectable into regions along the left and right sides of the map. By moving them off to this map info column, we've uh, reduced the clutter on the map so that the area on the map is, is much more legible and useful for navigation. Now, uh, I'm going to show you how to manage the screen layout on an HDX display. My discussion today is based on a single screen system. Of course, if you have two HDX displays, you would make some changes in this basic layout. All of the uh, control of the display layout is under this button 7 labeled display. And I'm going to push that button now. And I'm going to skip this screen for a moment. We'll come back to this. But before you start using this screen to change your layout in flight, uh, you would first start by setting up what I call your default screen configuration. And you control that through this icon in the lower right hand corner labeled Setup. So I'm going to select that button now. And this is the uh, screen for managing the default configuration of an HDX display. So let me describe here uh, the various sections of this page. But I want to first start by saying in HDX, we've created a concept uh, that's reminiscent of large commercial aircraft systems. And that is what I refer to as the cockpit roll of the display. And this first row of buttons at the top labeled primary content refers in essence to the primary role of this physical display in my cockpit. If this is my only display in my aircraft, then of course the primary role or the cockpit role of this display is going to be presenting flight instruments or PFD, primary flight display. And in this top row, PFD is one of my primary content or role selections. And that's how this display is currently set up. If this were a second or third display in my aircraft, I might choose to relegate the display to the role of map. In this case, I've selected map as the primary content for this display. And then, of course, engine is the third option. Now, I'm going to revert back to choosing primary flight display as the primary role for this physical display. Remember, this presentation, I'm assuming I have this one display in my aircraft. Now, having selected PFD as the primary content, I have some other selections down on this second row. Uh, one of those on the right is the engine bottom band. Notice if I select that button on, then the bottom engine instruments appear. You saw those earlier when I started this demonstration, but notice if I went back to the top row and selected engine as my primary content for this display, we automatically turn off the engine bottom band. 
the presumption is if you're using this display as a 100% engine instrument, it might be, for example, the third display in a three-screen system, and you fully dedicate it to engine instruments. In that case, there's no reason to display the bottom engine band. And that's why these two options are mutually exclusive. Once again, if I return this display to the primary flight display role, then I can enable the bottom engine band. Now the middle button on that second row says Map Info Column. That's the control to turn on and off the vertical column presenting map info items that I showed when we started. And I'm going to leave that turned on for now. And this uh, last option on the middle row says Split at Booth. That simply refers to the startup condition of the display. Uh, whatever you choose as your primary content will always be shown on this display. If you like the display to be split, be 50% PFD and 50% map, I would select this button on. And then when I start the system, uh, it would come up with the screen split 50-50. The bottom row on this display layout page is labeled primary side, and your options are left and right. That refers to the side on which I would like my primary content displayed when I do choose to split the screen. And in this condition, I have selected left as the primary side for my PFD. If I touch the right button, you'll notice that it swaps to the right side, the menu page goes to the left. Now I'm going to exit in this condition for a moment. I'm going to exit from that screen, and here you see my primary flight display, 100% wide, plus that map info data and my engine bottom band across the bottom. If I wanted to split the screen, I would now go back to the display menu and choose among the second row of items what we refer to as split content, the content I wish to display on the split side of the screen. Notice PFD is grayed out. It's not even selectable because the PFD is the primary content on this screen. That's its primary role. But engine and map are both selectable. And the most common selection would be map. If I choose map, that now becomes the split content on the left side of my display. Now some of you may be saying, well, that's great, Kirk, but uh, frankly, I always prefer my flight instruments on the left. So let's go back to display setup and return to that bottom row where I say primary side. I want my flight instruments to be primarily on the left whenever my screen is split. So I've done that. I'll close that menu. And here's a more typical display. Flight instruments on the left, moving map on the right, and the engine instruments across the bottom. Now let's explore the other split content I said you could choose. I'm going to go back to the display screen, or display menu, and select engine as my split content. Notice now we have a 50% engine page on the right, and I still have at least a portion of my engine bottom band. In this arrangement, we have laid out this 50% engine page to be complementary and additional to the instruments that are on the bottom engine band. You might use this to display a more uh, expansive view of your CHTs and EGTs to maybe see uh, some indications like pitot heat or the various fuel computer info items that simply don't have room to fit on the bottom engine band. Uh, we think that this is going to be a, prime, uh, a temporary configuration. You'll gather this extra engine information, and then you'll probably switch back to using MAP as the secondary content, the split content. Now let me talk a moment about the bottom engine band itself. Uh, hopefully you noticed a moment ago that, or any time I call up one of these menus, now this menu only is a partial height menu, but if I looked at the main menu screen, you'd see that it occupies the whole vertical height of the screen, and it is currently obscuring one half of that bottom engine band. I want to point out that we've configured the bottom engine band to have what we refer to as a protected side. So 50% of the engine band underlays the primary content, and 50% is under the split portion, the portion of the screen that can contain the split content. And when we ship the HDX display, you'll find that all of the engine instruments that are required under 91205 Bravo 
for VFR flight, all of those engine instruments are arrayed in this portion, this protected portion of the bottom engine band, so that any time you call up a menu, it will never obscure your primary instruments. So that's really integral to the design of that bottom engine band. Notice when I go into Display, Layout, Setup, and I choose the primary side, recall that this is going to move the flight instruments over to the right side. But notice the bottom engine band. That protected side of required engine instruments has followed the flight instruments to the right, to the primary side. When I close that display, once again, the required engine instruments are now protected on the right side of the screen, and any time I call up a menu, it'll overwrite the left half of that bottom engine band. I'm going to revert back using the display layout screen, set up, and switch back to placing my flight instruments on the primary side. So that's the basic concept in laying out the display. Uh, referring back to the display layout setup, you need to select these items at when you first install the HDX system. And you may experiment with this in, uh, when you're first flying with the HDX, but I think you'll find that once you have become comfortable with the system, you will arrive at a configuration that suits your needs and your mission best, whether you have one or two or even three HDX displays in the cockpit. Thereafter, I believe you'll probably rarely access this display layout screen and all of your focus will be simply changing what is the additional information presented in this example with your flight instruments. And again, I do that by going to the display menu and either changing the split content for that 50% side or choosing a full display of my engine, or excuse me, my flight instruments. So again, that's kind of the basic methodology of uh, defining your screen layout on an HDX display. Now I'm going to bring the map up into view again as my split content. Some of you might be saying, well, Kirk, it's great that you decluttered the map by putting that map info data on the right here in this column. But the combination of that column on the right and the engine instruments across the bottom gives me a pretty small map. Well, that's true, uh, but the map that's there, I'll point out, is much less cluttered than you might know from a Skyview system. Again, in, in the original Skyview, all of these data blocks would, could be arranged up and down the left and right sides of the map. They're slightly translucent, but they still add clutter to the map. Nonetheless, if the map you're looking at is too small, we've added a new touchable control on the HDX, and that's here in the upper left-hand corner of the map. If you're familiar with the internet video sites like YouTube, you may have seen an icon like this, and that icon is used to, to push the image to full screen. Now in the HDX concept here, full screen means the full 50% split portion of this display. So when I touch that control, the map occupies the full right-hand side of the display. We have removed that info column from the right, and we've removed the unprotected half of the bottom engine band. Again, we are retaining view of those required engine instruments on the left. And a simple touch of that icon brings those two elements back. And that control also works if you have uh, various charts on display, such as instrument procedures that can take the place of the map. That same maximize control will cause the chart to occupy the whole 50% portion of the window. So that's a pretty cool feature we've added to HDX. I think you'll find it's a great system, easier to use than the Skyview system, but it uh, builds on all the same fundamental features. And uh, I'm going to cover some of the additional features and user interface changes in HDX in future, future videos. So thanks for joining me. For more information on planning or capabilities of the Skyview system, please see our website at dynonavionics.com, where you can find links to our system installation guides, pilot user guides, and other valuable information like our user form. Thank you for watching the Dynon channel.